All the YouTube gurus tell you that if you want to get more views, you need to create a great quality title and thumbnail and a highly engaging YouTube video that makes people watch all the way to the end. Well, I'm going to show you data that proves this is actually not the case. So let me show you what I mean. All right, if we look at this small YouTube channel and we go into our analytics and we sort by click through rate. Now to judge the quality of our titles and thumbnails, we'll use our impression click through rate metric to measure what percentage of people click on our video after they see it served to them on YouTube. So if we sort this list by highest click through rate, we can see that this video here has a 16.7% click through rate. Now click through rate can be pretty subjective, but in general, a 16.7% click through rate is pretty damn high. However, this video only got 67 views. On the other hand, if we come down here to this video, we can see that it has an 8.7% click through rate. So just under half of the previous video we just looked at, and yet it has 3,140 views. So seemingly this first video we looked at has a better title and thumbnail because it has a higher click through rate. And yet this video with a click through rate half as good has I can't do the math in my head, but a freaking lot more views. <laughs> now you might be thinking, well, oh, Marcus, I've seen the Mr. Beast videos. I know that this second video must have more views because the video quality is better. Okay, that's a fair point. Let's look at our average view duration analytic. And that is basically a stat that measures how long on average people watch our videos for. So a longer average view duration means that on average people are watching our video for longer, theoretically implying that our video is higher quality. So our first video up here with 67 views has a two minute 30 average view duration. But our video down here with 3000 views has a one minute 39 average view duration. So contrary to what everyone's been telling you, it looks like high click through rate plus high average view duration actually doesn't equal more views. And I have loads more channels where I can show you examples just like this, because even if we go to the complete other end of the spectrum and look at a really successful video, for example, this one has almost 900,000 views, you'd think it'd be a really high quality video. But if we scroll down to our average view duration, we can see that out of this 25 minute video, people only watch it for two minutes and 43 on average. And this graph shows you visually how many people are dropping off. So let me unpretzel your brain, show you exactly what's going on here and how you can blow up your small channel and get more views in 2024 and beyond. And to do that, we're gonna to come to my very high production value digital whiteboard. <laughs> so let's imagine you post a video. Now, the first thing YouTube is going to do is it's going to test promoting that video to a very small audience of people who it thinks are highly likely to want to watch that video. And if you have a little bit of data on your channel already, this small audience YouTube's gonna send your video to are going to be most likely people who have already watched and enjoyed your previous videos. And now let's say YouTube sends your video to about 1000 viewers. And let's say when YouTube promotes this video to these 1000 highly engaged viewers, let's call them warm viewers, it's a big hit with the whole audience. And so about 15% of this audience click through to your video. Now you might think only 15% of 1000 people, but a 15% click through rate is actually pretty good when you consider that you're competing against the likes of Mr. Beast, Ryan Trahan, Eric, etc. Now this 15% of people who clicked would be our click through rate. And so if we have a click through rate of 15% and YouTube sent our video to 1000 viewers, that means we are going to have 150 views. Now all of this is very good so far. That's why I'm drawing with green, which is the good color. And so what YouTube does now that it's got positive signals and positive data is it goes and promotes your video to a larger audience. Let's say this audience is 100,000 people. But YouTube's not gonna send your video to all 100,000 viewers in this audience right away. What it'll do instead is it'll promote your video to a small portion of this audience in here. And let's say this initial test segment that it promotes to is 100 viewers. Now what the algorithm is gonna do is analyze how these 100 viewers of this larger audience react to your video to decide whether or not it should promote your video to the entire 100,000 viewers audience. Now let's say in this particular case, these 100 viewers, oh man, I can't draw for the life of me. These 100 viewers actually react negatively to this video. And by negatively, what I mean is that only a small percentage of them click. So we have a low click through rate. Let's say it's like 2%. And at a 2% click through rate, that means we're only getting an additional two views. And because the signals are so negative, the algorithm goes, oh, well, better pull back here. And I'm not gonna promote this video to the rest 
of this audience. And I know this is all getting a bit technical, but I promise this is really important and I'll show you how to use this information to get more views in just a second. So let's do some math and figure out what our video's overall stats are as a result of this promotion. So at this point, our video dies, stops getting more views. And by the way, if you have a video that takes off and then dies or flatlines, this is what's happened. YouTube's promoted it to a large audience until it's had an audience that is large and general enough that they stop resonating with your video as strongly and YouTube kills your reach. But in this case, in total, YouTube's promoted our video to 1000 viewers in our initial audience, 100 viewers in the test segment of our larger audience, and that equals 1,100. Now of those 1,100 people, a total of 152, remember our click-through rates down here, clicked onto our video. Which means that at the end of the day, this video ends up with a click-through rate. Let me do the math here, because I'm not smart enough to do it in my head. This video ends up with a click-through rate of 152 divided by 100 equals 13.8%. That is the most woeful three I've ever seen in my life. 13.8%. So at the end of the day, when this video has run its course, we have gained ourselves a total of 152 views and a 13.8% click-through rate. Now the same process I'm showing you now happens with your video quality, your average view duration, but for simplicity's sake, let's just focus on click-through rate for now. So you're probably wondering, Marcus, why do I need to know this? What does this have to do with getting more views? Well, I'll show you. Let's go down and create another scenario here. So we post another video and YouTube does the same thing we just talked about, promotes, there's a shocking arrow, promotes our video to a small test audience of let's say a thousand people again, right? Same thing happens as before. This video resonates very positively with this initial test warm, highly engaged audience. When YouTube promotes our video to them, a high percentage of them click. Again, let's say it's 15%. And that means this video currently gets 150 views from this initial test audience. So YouTube does the same thing. It starts promoting our video to a larger audience of 100,000 people. And it starts out by doing the same thing that we did up here. It's gonna promote it to a small segment of viewers. But let's say this time, YouTube promotes this video to this small percentage of audience, but they react far more positively than they did up in this scenario. And when I say these viewers are reacting positively to this video and sending YouTube good signals, what I mean is that more of these viewers find the title and thumbnail appealing, so a much higher percentage of them are clicking. Instead of only 2% of them clicking, let's say 7% of them click, which in this circumstance, let's just say that's high enough for YouTube to be like, okay, we're now gonna send this video to the entire audience because we have a higher confidence level that this video is going to get clicks from viewers and it's what viewers want to see. Now, out of these 100,000 viewers, let's say about 6% of them click. Not as high as our initial warm audience here, but it's kind of to be expected, 100,000 viewers, much more general, broader audience. On average, there's probably gonna be less people who are gonna find our video appealing. So 6% of 100,000 viewers equals 6,000 additional views for this video. And if YouTube saw this as a good number, it would continue this cycle. It would come here and it would promote this video again to an even larger audience and repeat the analysis process I've just showed you. But just to keep things simple, let's have a look at what our numbers look like on this particular video. So in total, YouTube has promoted this video to 1,000 initial viewers plus our larger audience of 100,000 viewers. I'm just gonna put 100K because I can't bother drawing more zeros. And that means this video was promoted to a total of 101,000 viewers. Now of those 101,000 viewers, we managed to capture 150 plus 6,000, so 6,150 views. Now, based on how many people YouTube promoted our video to and how many views we got, we can take our calculator and work out what our click-through rate would be. So in this case, so we take one, 6,150 divided by 101,000 equals a click-through rate of 608%. Don't worry about the top half of this eight, it went on holiday. So in total, this video got a click-through rate of 6%, but got 6,150 views. Compare that to our previous video that got 152 views, but a 13.8% click-through rate. So what we can see here is that this video actually has a more clickable title and thumbnail because overall more people are willing to click on it even though the click-through rate is far worse 
than our initial example. And this exact same thing happens with your average view duration and all of the other stats in your YouTube analytics dashboard. Sometimes your stats might be quite high. You might think you have a high average view duration, so good video quality, or a high click through rate, so good title and thumbnail, when in reality, they're actually not very good and that's why YouTube is not promoting your video. So now that you know more about how the YouTube algorithm works than probably like 98% of small creators on the platform. Let me talk about how we can practically use this knowledge to get more views. But before we do that, I do want to apologize quickly. And that is because in the past, when I've talked about improving your tiles and thumbnails, I've often said you need to improve your click-through rate. And while technically improving your tiles and thumbnails will improve your click-through rate, sometimes that might manifest as your impression click-through rate stat actually going down and looking worse. And same goes for average view duration and most of the other stats in your analytics. So I want to apologize for that. I'm going to try to be more precise in my language moving forward. But anyway, now I've got this out of the way, I want to show you a really simple yet effective strategy on how you can actually use the information you just gained to actually get a lot more views. And I'll show you some examples on screen right now of other channels that have used this strategy and where they are now. And I'm showing you these examples not to be a douche, but because this strategy is going to seem so simple that you're going to think it's not going to work, but it does. So, so the first step of this strategy is where most of us started out is that we have an idea or we do some research and find a type of video that we want to create on YouTube. Given that you're watching this video, you've probably already done this. The second step is you then create a bunch of those videos that you had the idea for or found the research for. Again, you've probably already done on this nice work you're a high achiever and then the third step once you've got a bunch of videos live they've gathered some data is to analyze your results and then alter your strategy and the types of videos you're going to make moving forward based on your results so that means you change or stop doing the things that aren't working and you keep doing or do more of the things that are working now this is all pretty damn intuitive so far many of you are already doing this but the mistake a lot of you guys are making is you're not understanding the signals for example, you're looking at this video with 67 views, but a really high click through rate and really high average view duration and thinking, wow, this is my best content. I should create more new friends and rage, Valorant funny moments videos. And this is a big mistake because what you want to actually be focusing on first is views. Now, if your click through rate and average view duration go up in correlation with views going up, that's great, amazing sign. But doesn't always happen like that. So in this case, what I would do is I'd actually come down to this video, which has gotten us the most views, 3,140, despite having a lower click through rate and average view duration. I'm sounding like a broken record at this point, but I really wanna rub this point home. And then at this point, we're gonna do something I call the sequel strategy. We're gonna analyze this video and figure out how we can make a sequel to it. So in this particular case, we can see that this making a low rider, which is the type of vehicle in need for speed heat, is the video. And so the first thing I would take from this is I need to create more making a insert vehicle here videos for NSF heat. And I want to make them for the same type of audience that found this particular video so appealing. So for example, I might come to chat GPT and I'm going to use GPT-4 because I'm rich. I'm doing a lot of flexing today. My whiteboard, chat GPT-4. And maybe what I'll do is what are, are some other similar vehicles to that is not how you spell <laughs> vehicles to the low rider so we can see chat gpt has given us a bunch of similar cars in this case the first one comes up is hot rods so my sequel strategy video to this might be creating a hot rod in nsf heat and then what i'd do is i'd model the thumbnail i'd use the same style of text i'd come to the analytics of this video i'd scroll down to the audience retention graph here and i'd do things like look at this period here where you can see that my massive drop has started to flatten out. And I try and figure out what happened here that caused people to stop clicking off my video and how can I replicate that effect in my sequel video. I'd also come along maybe up here. You can see that retention is pretty good up until here and then right about here, it drops off. I'd figure out what happened right about here that caused these people to drop off and I would not do that thing in my sequel strategy video. And I know this stuff is super boring to do. You just want like a little setting to be able to flick and all of a sudden your video is gonna go viral. But I promise you, there is no setting like that that exists. It's this little boring stuff repeated over and over again that separates the winners from the losers on YouTube. And by focusing on the right numbers and doing this consistently and frequently over an extended period 
period of time, you're going to be getting so much closer to your goals and getting monetized on YouTube than you would be focusing on all these newfangled hacks. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you do want more in-depth help on this, I do have a more advanced course you can find in the description. This course is structured as a challenge and the guarantee is that by the end of it, you will have at least 1,000 subscribers on your channel. And if you complete the challenge, you do what I tell you to do and for some crazy reason, you don't have 1,000 subscribers by the end of it, I will refund your entire investment. So you get specific results in a specific time frame or you get your money back. And there's already been loads of people go through the challenge and my refund rate fluctuates between two and 5%. And I'll let you do the math on that one. So if you want my help in growing your channel and doing everything we talked about this video, plus a bunch more, the link will be down below. By the end of the challenge, you'll have at least a thousand subscribers. Or if you don't, for some crazy reason, I'll refund you everything. I don't want your money. But if you're not ready for that, click the video on screen. I'll show you a step-by-step -step process of how I used a snippet of code to almost instantly get 28% more real subscribers without doing any extra work. So that video will be on screen. Check it out.